Please be seated. Do you want a two and a half hour mass? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, that was last week. Last week was a blast of the spirit. So we, we praise God for, for all the healings that took place last week. And, um, and Terry was praying for us in Birmingham Airport, along with Laurie and Andy and uh, Helen and I were, were, were here and everybody was here to, to celebrate the healing power of Jesus. And then the next day we had the missionary disciples uh, with Deacon Laurie and Andy and uh, we celebrated, um, just celebrated, celebrated the love of, of Jesus. It was just so powerful. I was a little bit late for that meeting, but I, I just stepped into the, the light and the spirit. It was incredible. And then, of course, the preaching school the next day for deacons and, and, and priests. And um, so uh, Deacon Laurie and, and Terry uh, led that. And it was just so, so wonderful. So anyway, um, maybe you'll, you'll, you'll uh, discover some of the little uh, learnings I had from that um, indirectly, of course. Okay. So, anyway, first of all, uh, I've got a story for you. I love stories. Do you want a story? Okay. I want to tell you a story. Story of a doctor who, who said to the woman patient, he said, your husband needs rest and peace. Here are some sleeping pills. And the woman replied, when should I give them to him? The doctor said, they're not for him. They're for you. <laughs> Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened and I will give you rest. As I said earlier, we often hear that as, as funerals. If you wanted the top three gospel, um, gospels for funerals, that would be definitely in the top three. I, I, I find myself often going to that gospel. Come to me, that, that invitation of Jesus. You don't have to go to that or that or that. Come to me. You don't have to go to Reiki, bioenergy, yoga. Come to me. That invitation, always. And it's open 24-7, brothers and sisters. 24-7. Come to me. There are so many people under pressure today. So many people. There's possibly people here who are under severe pressure. It could be pressure in your marriage. The man or woman you married is now like a total stranger. Perhaps you have a family member that you haven't been talking to for a long, long time. That's pressure. It could be about land, inheritance, money. It usually is, has something to do with, with money or land, especially in, in rural areas, but not always rural areas. Perhaps you are in financial trouble and you haven't told anyone about this. You're too proud, you don't want to say it, you don't want to share it. Perhaps you're anxiously waiting on medical results. That anxiousness, waiting, waiting, waiting. Perhaps you have a secret addiction. It could be gambling, pornography, alcohol, social media. You don't want to be caught, but at the same time you do want to be caught. Because then maybe, just maybe, you'll begin the process of healing. I've been a practitioner of unbound deliverance ministry for quite a number of years now and, and people come to me and, and others. Helen is also a practitioner of this ministry and, and Joan and, and others are involved in this ministry too. So, so many people come with these negative spirits, these burdens, burdens that they have carried around in them for years maybe way back since childhood, they've carried these burdens. And from this ministry, I know there are very few people who are burden-free. Very few people who are burden-free. People call, carry all kinds of things, like the spirit of anger, the spirit of bitterness, the spirit of resentment, the spirit of depression, the spirit of fear. Lots and lots of burdens. I'm sure every person here has at least one burden that they've brought with them today. That's good because we're in the presence of the person who's saying to us, come to me, come to me. I remember my recent um, close call with death, even saying that kind of, whoa, 
close call with death, that D word. If I hadn't have mentioned that periodic tightness in my chest and just let things sort of linger on, then as a cardiologist uh, said to me, I was looking at a heart attack. Really, I was looking at a heart attack. It certainly sobers one up uh, to the delicacy of life and the gift of second chances. What have I learned? What have I learned from all of this? Well, actually, I don't know. I wish I could say I've learned this and this and this, but I don't know what I've learned. People say to me, slow down, delegate, 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 delegate all these responsibilities. But I do not know who to delegate to. You will hear me talking about, um, later on I'll say something about, and Terry, about net ministries. And also I'll be talking about a pastoral area, pastoral council. I'm full of these ideas to evangelize and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in all kinds of new ways. It's sort of part of my pastoral DNA. But it's hard. It's hard finding people who share this vision and want to do this vision. People, good Christian people, are not going to say, I'll take that burden or this burden off you. You know, if that happened, I would go, what? Really? Why is that? Because we are so busy, all of us are so busy looking after our own and trying to find that work-life balance. Anything extra, even the salvation of souls, is just too much. I'm too busy. I have my own little group to look after. So today we bring all of these frustrations, all of these burdens to Jesus who says, come to me. Come to me. Are you carrying a deep, heavy burden right now? Come to me. That issue with your brother or sister, your husband, wife, come to me. Come to me. Come to me with that secret addiction. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am meek and gentle in heart. During that time when Jesus walked this earth, the religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, placed heavy, heavy burdens on people. If you were sick, it's because you are a sinner, or your parents are sinners. That's the reason. That was their logic. If you didn't know every finite detail of the law, you were in trouble with God. Too bad if you were poor. Too bad if you couldn't read or write. That's your problem. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they added to the burdens people already had. Yet Jesus says to us today, my yoke is easy and my burden light. Jesus is saying, I see you, I know you, I love you. Come to me. I see your burden, I know your burden, I love you, come to me. There are many of you who still feel heartbroken, possibly due to the death of a loved one. Grief is a heavy, heavy burden. The death of a loved one, the death of a marriage, unforgiveness between siblings, whatever it is, I want you now to try to identify it, whatever burden you are facing, identify it. And for a moment of silence, I invite you just to listen. Listen to Jesus say, come to me, I will give you rest. And if you cannot go to Jesus, why don't you invite Jesus to come to you? Come to me, Jesus. Come to me, please. Come to me. You know my burden. Come to me, Jesus. Please come to me. Come to me, Jesus. Please come to me. 
Should we all stand up? Please stand up. And I invite you just to say that internally. You know, come to me, Jesus. Please come to me. You know, whatever burden you have, just ask Jesus to come to you right now. I also invite you to, to open your arms like that. Open your arms wide. Open your arms wide. So what you're doing now is inviting Jesus to come to you in an embrace. Okay? And when you feel that embrace, I invite you to close your arms and feel that embrace of Jesus who is holding you now. Wrap your arms around him. Wrap your arms around him. This coming week, brothers and sisters, I invite you to do that many times. Any burden that you're facing, go to your private room or pri private space and, and just with Jesus, just allow him to hold you. Amen. Please uh, remain standing. Um, you know, I did this this morning in prayer, and uh, I was there for a long, long time. And I said, "Okay, Jesus, you can let go now." <laughs> right? Jesus, Jesus, come on, I have to let go now. <laughs> but that's the kind of Jesus that we have, the kind of God that we have. He wants to hold on to us. He wants to hold us and hold us and hold us. He loves us so, so much. And there's so many people in the world who carry so many burdens and they do not know that. But they have us to tell them, right?